Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Our next presenter, um, who I have the uh, pleasure of welcoming to the stage, Dr. Uh, Kaveh Bashiri. Uh, Dr. K uh, Bashiri uh, received his PhD in mathematics from the University of Bonn. Uh, since uh, 2021, he's a researcher at the cryptography, or cryptography group of BSI. His main interests are post-quantum, you're in the right place, um, cryptography, especially Haas-based uh, signature schemes, and post-quantum computing in general. So welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for this introduction. And uh, yeah, I also would like to express my gratitude to the organizers for this very, very interesting and uh, very, very nice conference. And um, yeah, I um, aim to present um, one uh, one very big project that we are working on. Um, it's about the PQC migration of our administration PKI. And it's joint work with my colleague Stavos Kuzidis. Um, yeah, so I would like to start with a very brief introduction of our uh, administration PKI. Um, so we call it in Germany Verwaltungs PKI or in short V PKI. And uh, the goal is, as usual for public key infrastructures, is a um, trustworthy identity management for the public administration. Here we include institutions both on a federal and on a state and on a municipal level. What do I mean with identity management? As I said, as usual for PKIs, so if I want to send to my colleague Stefan, for example, who gave his talk yesterday, I want to uh, send him an assigned document. He knows that the signature, the, the public key corresponding to the signature really belongs to me. Okay. So our public key infrastructure consists of three levels. We have um, on the subscriber level, we have the, um, we have the, the user level, the end users. They use the certificates for signature generation or encryption. Their certificates are valid for a period of um, three years, usually, and they are signed by the sub-CAs. And um, the sub-CAs, they are either um, trustworthy institutions, certificate authorities who issue certificates on a commercial basis, or they are segmented parts of our pub public administration who issue their own certificates. Their certificates are usually uh, valid for six years and they are signed by the root CA. And this root CA is operated by us, the BSI, and it's, it has a validity period for, of 10 years and it's self-signed. Okay. So as I said, these certificates, they, they are used on the subscriber or on each level for signature generation encryption. For instance, they are used in SMIME and TLS and other standard applications. And the scale that we have at the moment is we have um, six sub-CAs that are going at the moment and around half a million subscribers on the subscriber level. So it's a rather complex and huge PKI. And the algorithms that are used, so we call it a homogeneous PKI because each algorithm on each level and each public key that is inside the certificate and each signature uh, algorithm which is used to sign the certificate, they are all based on RSA. And I like the terminology that we heard yesterday, so hearing RSA sh makes us see a really dark cloud, namely the quantum uh, computer threat, so we need to migrate towards a quantum safe PKI. And um, one very important question here, is of course the choice of the signature scheme. It's a very important question in the design of this um, quantum safe VPKI. And so we have certain criteria here that we have to respect. Of course, security. I mean, for us, it's especially important. It's it even in our name. So security is a very important criteria. And also import, uh, important is the performance. So we. When, of course, we went on in a 
we wanted to identify the use cases and to identify which kind of what is what part of which kind of performance is very essential. So and we identified that the certificate sizes for the use cases, for the most use cases in this VPKI, very very important. So the cryptographic very rel relevant part of the certificate size is, of course, the signature plus the public key size. So this is one thing that we have to um, optimize in our choice of the digital uh, signature or, uh, of the signature scheme. And of course, interoperability very important. So we can only consider standardized schemes. And as I said, the certificates are used for standard applications. So we need to be compatible with these. We need compatibility with these standard applications. Another criteria that um, we identified, which is sort of a, a consequence of, of a special kind of signature scheme that I will explain later, is availability. We have a so sort of sensitive data is processed in this PKS, so availability is very important. So what candidates do we have here? So I wrote down a few of them that we can we are thinking about, so there are these stateful hash-based signature schemes, XMS, uh, XMSS and LMS, and their multi-tree variants. They have uh, advantages, namely, we believe that, or, or we, s we say, we claim that it's, uh, we are not the only one who believe this, that the uh, security properties are well understood. So their theoretic security uh, assumptions rely on the security on the underlying hash function. Okay. And um, so as these Merkle tree signatures, you have a lot of degrees of freedom to choose your parameters. You can choose your parameters for different settings. Well, um, the performance, so the, in our case, the signature and the public key size becomes very reasonable. We see later numbers here. Okay. But there's, of course, disadvantages, cons that we have. Of course, it's the statefulness, which immediately restricts a lot of use cases. I will go back to this point later on. And also the backup management, which I will also explain in a few moments. So then we can think about, okay, we like the security of the hash-based signature schemes, but we don't like the statefulness. But what about a stateless hash-based signature scheme? And there is a, um, uh, there is a scheme, a very nice scheme available, Sphinx Plus, and which is about to be standardized by NIST, SLHDSA. And yeah, of course, then its security properties are still well understood. But the price of getting rid of the statefulness is performance. So the signature size is for maybe too large for many of, uh, of our um, use cases that we have in mind. And yeah, so then we can think about going, going away from hash-based signature schemes, thinking about the lithium or what is going to be named uh, MLDSA. So it definitely has a better performance than Sphinx Plus. It will also presumably, so what we see in the standardization activities, and, um, and it will probably be the mainstream solution. So it will definitely have the compatibility with the standard applications. But, so there is a question mark here. It's based on structured lattices. So, I mean, there's many, many things that speak in favor for the security of structured lattices, but still, especially if you want to use it for a root CA, we want to be 100% sure. So there's a little question mark here. But also the compatibility of the hybrid mode. So due to this thing that we have a very small question mark here and also for the implementation, which we do not have that much experience with the classical schemes, we only um, recommend and only plan to apply it in our VPKI in hybrid mode, namely in combination with ECDSA. So then we have to think about the compatibility of this hybrid mode, which I also will talk about in a few moments. So I will, so as I said, I will uh, go to this, uh, to this little bullet points, I will speak about them um, in more detail. So let's st start with the performance, which is, as I said, a very important criteria for us. We have the, uh, so now a little bit uh, compare the, uh, the relevant schemes, their uh, certificate sizes, or especially their, the signature plus public key size. Current situation is RSA uh, um, 4K, and uh, the current situation is that the signature plus public key size is one kilobyte. Okay. 
If we go to the lithium three, three in hybrid mode, where okay, the ECDSA part is absolutely irrelevant here, we we have to increase the size by uh, by a, uh, we, we have to increase the, the, the to, to five times the size or almost uh, five times 5.5 times the size. So it's a huge increase in this signature uh, in in this certificate size. But and if we even plan to do Sphinx Plus. Here in this level three parameter set, we even go to 14.5 kilobytes, so even more. And there is also an another op uh, option which probably uh, will be available at some point. Is it is Sphinx plus few, or which we call Sphinx plus few. It's so so these signature schemes here they are uh, you, they are um, uh, allowed to be for an unlimited number of signatures. I think. Uh, virtually unlimited, so it was uh, around two to the power sixty-three, I think. But you can also say, okay, in some use cases, you will never be close to that number. So what about if you say only two to the power twenty signatures? Then, especially for Sphinx Plus here, you can reduce the signature size. And this is this parameter set that we see here. It's state, it's still stateless, but still larger than the lithium and ECDSA. But now we can think about the state full hash based signature schemes that I mentioned, LMS and its um, and its um, multi tree variant HSS. So we see it's almost in the same area as the RSA. So therefore, we are thinking about and we are uh, studying the question: sh Can we use these state full hash based signature schemes for our root CA? Okay, and now I will dive a little bit deeper into this question. And uh, yeah, so first of all, we have to think about the statefulness, which I already said, which limits the use cases. So it definitely won't work for the subscriber level. And But we believe for the root CA level, it should be manageable, the statefulness. This is because it's a very moderate number of signatures that we generate over the period of... Um, or the whole lifetime of a, a, a key pair. It's around, I think, 2 to the power 10, so around 1,000 signatures. And um, yeah, and it's a very secure environment that we have in the root CA. Outlet security module should be good. And um, yeah, so this, this one should work for the root CA. But there is this backup management. So one important thing to know is that, uh, two important things. The root CA has to be able to generate signatures for 10 years, for the whole period. This is very important for us. This is the policy that we have. And um, the other thing is, for the backup management, for the stateful hash-based signature schemes, in this corresponding NIST special publication, the corresponding standard, it is, uh, there is a, the restriction that private key material is not allowed to be exported, which has very reasonable, uh, very is very reasonable to make this uh, requirement. However, straightforward backup management is therefore not possible because you cannot just write your private key down on a sheet of paper and put it under your pillow or something. So very safe. It's not possible here. You have to think of other backup management solutions. So there is this solution by NIST, also in this special publication. Uh, which I would like to very briefly present now. Um, so we create a top-level Merkle tree on HSM, on a hardware security model zero. This is the top-level one. Then we create bottom-level Merkle trees. This will be LMS trees on uh, two different HSMs. Uh, so at least one of them is different than HSM zero. Okay. Then we sign the roots of these trees. So this is just a straightforward multi-tree um, structure. We assign the roots of these bottom-level Merkle trees with the top-level Merkle tree. Then we store the corresponding signature of these roots. We store the corresponding signature and the authentication paths outside of the cryptographic module. This one we can write on paper and put it somewhere safe. Then we use HSM1 to sign messages. Perfectly fine. This is a very, very good strategy. And then as soon as it's HSM1 breaks or the number of signatures that, it, that it's allowed to do is uh, 
it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's exceeded, then we can switch to HSM2. And we can even initiate new HSM3s whenever we wish, as long as HSM0 is alive, operational. However, cryptographic modules, they may be operational for less than 10 years, so they may have a lifetime. So it, it's, it is possible that all HSMs, especially when we initiated them all at the same time, they might break at the same time. So the strategy that we have won't um, make sure that the root CA can generate signatures for 10 years. Because so we have, there must be solutions, and we believe that there is a solution we are also thinking about, and uh, we are talking with a lot of people here. Uh, so this is a problem that we have to change. This is a uh, challenge that we have, which I wanted to share with you. Okay, so um, there is another challenge here on this list that I want to mention here. There's this compatibility of the hybrid mode of this um, the lithium and ECDSA signature. So what do I mean with this? So we um, see this as independent signatures, so this PQC signature and ECC that we have. We, s we, we combine them with the, the way we want to do it. Is we want to combine them with an AND concatenation. So the okay. Sorry. Is it me? Okay. Is it doesn't it doesn't like the signature hybrid mode? <laughs> it's a standalone thing. Okay. Okay. So now it's so it's and concatenation and valid if and only if all independent signatures verified. Okay. So both signatures verified. So there are also concrete proposals right now at the IETF. These are the two drafts, and they use the composite construction. So namely, they, they explicitly take two specific algorithms and combine them. So this is not a generic um, construction where this you can also uh, identify the specific algorithms of the PQC and the ECDSA scheme um, in the parameters field. So this is a comp uh, composite construction. Okay, these are about this this. This, the, this, the candidates that we have, but we have also have further criteria that I want to mention very briefly here. So there's, of course, uh, design of certificates. So how do we design them here? Um, we will have separate signature and encryption certificates, which uh, uh, just because we have different algorithms here. So we have different signature, uh, uh, the different certificates here for each subscriber. Uh, and the standardization of these post-quantum schemes in common certificate formats. We have to take care of this. Here we are working, and I think it's today, which will be very important. Um, we are working on uh, hash-based signature schemes in X509 certificates. There is this draft, which at the IETF um, conference is discussed at the moment, I think. Okay, the other... Uh, criteria that we have to think about is uh, how do we migrate? So we plan a parallel approach. So the current RSA-based uh, VPKI is uh, it, it it will be it will operate, and in parallel we build our quantum-safe VPKI. We hope here a smooth transition, guaranteeing business continuity. Continuity. So. Now another very important message that I want to deliver here in this talk. So let us write down in a very ambitious world, if we do this plan, if we write it down, how long will it take to fully migrate to post quantum uh, to, a to a quantum safe German administration PKI? So in a very ambitious world, let's assume that our first PQC route or test PQC route starts 2025. So then if you really write down all the, the previous, the, 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 the RSA, PKI, and the PQC route, if you really see that due to the long certificate um, periods, uh, the validity periods that we have, see that the full migration is, even in this ambitious world, is uh, com uh, con concluded 2035. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a long, long journey. Okay, I would like to conclude with a brief summary. Um, so 
we identified crucial criteria for the choice of the post-quantum schemes, which are again listed here, security, performance, interoperability, compatibility with standard applications and high avail availability. We consider hash-based signature schemes, which we believe are good candidates. We have high confidence in them, but they have restrictions which need to be carefully considered. And yeah, in the migration timeline for a complex PKI in the optimistic world is around 15 years. So, so when is the time to initiate this transition? Better yesterday than now, okay? And yeah, so we need commitment from all um, parties for this PQC migration in order to solve the last challenges and questions. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much. Any questions in the room? And one up here. I'll bring the magic cube up. Thank you. I'm involved with um, uh, PKI as well on smart cards. And uh, in our case, it's uh, an EIDAS EI certified PKI. Um, I have two questions for you. One is uh, more technical. And the first one is, is it wise to use different algorithms in your PKI stack? And the second is, what consequences would it have to put the PKI for the end user in a qualified signature creation device? Okay, um, so the, the, first, the, the first question was if to have different um, schemes on, in the PKI on different levels, so a heterogeneous PKI. So yeah, so it will make the situation more complex. You need to uh, you need to have more verification routines on the subscriber level. They have to be embedded there. It will be complex. We have to think. I mean, especially for our use case, I think probably for yours as well. We are dependent on standard application. We have to see if these verification routines. So if you want to verify the whole chain, is embedded into the standard application. So, uh, so. It would be easier to, n to have a homogeneous scheme, so we could do the lithium ECDSA for the whole scheme, but if for, uh, from our pers perspective, to this is a, a trade-off. So if you do the homogeneous thing, it's a little bit less complex from the cryptographic structure, but, from, uh, but if you do have a hash-based signature scheme on the root CA, we have a better security feel. And uh, of course, this the reduced signature size, guys, size that you have there. Okay, and the second question was, uh, if I remember correctly, was about uh, PQC on the subscriber level. Yes. Oh, sorry. We are certified for uh, for uh, qualified signatures according to EIDAS. Okay. And what consequences would it have to to do post quantum crypto? On the also on the subscriber level, that will fulfill the requirements of uh, EIDAS uh, qualified signatures and what it does with uh, the smart cards. Okay, so um, the EIDAS part of the question, I'm not the correct person from the BSI to talk about this. I'm very sorry about this, but for the so we we want on the subscriber level PQC. So this is very important. So there. So in, this, in this, our situation, they are also used for um, for uh, encryption, the subscribers, and sensitive data is processed, so which may have also uh, long-term security. So harvest now decrypt later is relevant on the subscriber level for the encryp encryption part, and also, yeah. So also, if we so we want to do one migration. So at some point, if really Q day is coming and the quantum com uh, computers, uh, cryptographically relevant com quantum computers are there, then uh, we need also on the subscriber level for the signatures, we need post-quantum schemes. Yeah. For the EIDAS question, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm can maybe talk later. Okay. Yeah. I see there's another question. Okay. Yeah. First, uh, thanks a lot for the Thank insightful you. presentation. I have a question related to the challenges associated with such a big transition. Yeah. 
what we see already in the industry with other ongoing transition with IPv6, with the DNSSEC. Even yesterday, someone mentioned TLS 1.3 is not as widely adopted. Still, it's relatively easy compared to this. Do you think that the challenge uh, is mostly regulation related or technical related, or it's more of a, uh, how to say, uh, a commitment for all party from uh, engineering, from uh, regulatory bodies, and also from solution providers? I think both, definitely both. I mean, <laughs> so we are, we have also technical problems, which I said about the backup management, also the talk of by Joffe Bus today in the morning, we have open questions, which is interesting from an academic point of view, but still, if we want to plan things now, we want to migrate now, it would be nice to have solved these problems. So, uh, so definitely both parties. And uh, yeah, so that's why we from the governmental bodies, we engage in these kind of conferences, which, which hopefully facilitate and um, accelerate the process to solve this question and the, in the, uh, the awareness and the, uh, and the interest of involved parties. But yeah, but def definitely a very good question, and uh, I think both. Excellent. We have a we have a plethora of questions online, but we only have time for one. So I've chosen the one that I think is a great question. Okay. Uh, they're all great questions, actually. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, but this one jumped out at me. So, do you see P uh, PKI migration transition times shortening to lower than the fifteen years that was in your slide uh, once we become uh, more mature and optimized in this space? Um, in general, I think it, so. So, in, in in many use cases, it can be an option. I, I I will not talk about other use cases, but in our uh, use case, it will be a change in the policy. So we have a strict VPKI policy, which we use to shorten the signature, uh, the the validity periods. Would need a would mean a violation of our policy, which we probably won't do and do not want to do because th th this also has certain consequences other consequences and um yeah but uh, but if i mean if q day came then uh, then we th then we have to <laughs> evaluate again which is more important <laughs> yeah fair enough well thank okay. you very much thank that you was a great uh, great presentation thank you in today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.